Brain's activated. He's a better grappler than you are. That looks good, sir. Oh my god. <laughs> going for the gimmick. Nice. Oh my goodness. Great pressure here from Stubbill. Gets oh, it. Wow. Oh no, misses, but he gets the overhead. Okay. And he can't just keep himself safe. But here, in that position. Oh no! Yes! That's he it. He is dead. Perfect! Hello and welcome to my Uniclear Gordo Guide. This will be fairly lightly scripted. I only have a page of notes to go off of here, so I might miss a few things here and there, but I'll try and cover all of what's important. We'll be going over Gordo's strengths and weaknesses, his game plan, moveset, and some matchups as well. Feel free to refer to the video description for timestamps and a table of contents if you want to skip to anything in particular. Before we start, I'll give you guys a little bit about myself. I'm Canada, and more specifically, Toronto FGC, and I go by Nut Milk. I've played a good 600 hours plus with Gordo, and I've won several volumes of manga, probably like 200 bucks, and a Sonico figurine from local tournaments, so you can 100% put your trust in me when I say that I know what I'm talking about. Definitely. I traded you this for this! Yes. Months of lavin! <laughs> Phoenix Rose online! For this. 100%. So for starters, we can talk about what kind of character Gordo is. What does he have to offer in the cast of Undernight? Gordo is an extremely well-rounded grappler character. With far-reaching moves and oppressive pressure at close range, your aim is to take control of the match in all aspects. So let's start with his strengths. Gordo can control space extremely well thanks to these aforementioned far-reaching moves which just covers so much space, all of which can be used for different things. Poking and keeping your opponent in check, with punishing, and in some cases, allowing you to start your close range pressure. This space control applies to both horizontal space and vertical and diagonal space as well. I'd say that Gordo has one of, if not the best, anti-air capability out of the entire cast. If you're still feeling out the neutral game, Gordo is a great character to learn it with. Now, I just said that Gordo has the tools to control space but just relying on that alone won't get you anywhere in Undernight. So this is where we get to Gordo's pressure up close. When he's in your face, he can be quite stressful to deal with. He has a lot of moves that help him press advantage up close. Some have huge cancel windows which set up nicely for frame traps. He has a number of moves that give plus frames, and his command grab steel grid, that little bar on the bottom. This inconspicuous looking bar of rhombuses is what gives you access to the Vorpal state, which allows you to chain shift, or CS for short, which is basically an invincible, single frame time stop on demand. It gives you increased damage, makes your force function, Rusty Nail, faster and insanely huge, and lets you CVO to end your combos for more damage. Landing command grabs in the right combo enders can set you up nicely to win the grid cycle non-stop if you get the ball rolling. Again, this makes Gordo great for learning how to play the game well in the context of the game system mechanics. Winning grid is imperative not only for Gordo, but for his opponent as well. Leveraging this advantage is something he can excel at. So you might be thinking now that with all these strong points, that being huge hitboxes and the ability to grapple your opponent when they're bunkered down, that Gordo is a top tier. Now this used to be the case in Uniel, but not anymore. <laughs> I said earlier that Gordo is extremely well rounded, right? Now. This is almost to a fault, and now we come to his weak points, all of which are counterpoints to the strong points that I've mentioned earlier. So the simple fact of the matter is that there are a lot of ways to circumvent Gordo's shenanigans, and if the opponent knows how to deal with these things and you do not adapt to that, all you have is a character with very telegraph pokes, stubby melee, and very painfully slow moves. So painfully slow. There's a big reason why I associate his huge moves with space control and not zoning. Not only does playing Gordo like a zoner waste your grappling potential, it is also really easy to block. One thing about Undernight that you will learn is that defense is incredibly strong and rewarding. There's a meme in the community about dash blocking and if you've been invested in the game for a while, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So unlike in say, an Arxis game like Gear or Blaze Blue, where you need to use resources to block immediately after dashing, 
In Undernight, you can just dash up and hold down back to block right away, no questions asked. This will allow your opponents to close the gap very easily on you if you just spam moves. In addition, every character has access to shield, 4D or 1D. If the opponent knows you're just throwing out moves mid-screen, it's not uncommon for them to just shield them all outright and win grid and close space on you off of that. You do not want to spam your moves willy-nilly. Now I also mentioned his pressure being oppressive, and it really is, honestly. It isn't because of insane high-low mix-up potential or cross-ups or anything goofy like that, but because of his strong frame traps, advantageous moves, and grappling capability. But aside from the latter, that is something that a lot of the cast is able to do already, or even better in some cases. You are liable to getting frame traps blown up by reversals and backdashes. Resetting pressure always presents a risk because of how stubby your faster normals are. You will have to constantly be teetering on the edge of what is safe and what isn't if you're trying to open your opponent up to you. So with all of this being said, I would say Gordo is a noob stomper character. If people just get randomly clipped by your moves and give you all the respect in the world up close, your life is so easy! If the opponent has a feeling for the matchup though, you're really going to have to exert yourself. You gotta use your brain, especially since his damage is just fairly middle of the road, it's whatever. So all in all, Gordo is a good character to pick up and try to master if you're just starting out. He'll be able to play the game and have some fun to start with, with some obscenely huge and sick looking moves that all convert pretty easily into some decent damage. Now the skill ceiling though, it doesn't have to do with mechanical skill or hard to execute combos or anything like that. It's both high and variable. People that know how to deal with your shenanigans will have to get you to think out of the box and adapt. So then what you have with Gordo is a grappler heavily reliant on keeping your advantage more so than any other. But honestly, that just makes the victories that are hard fought even more rewarding. Alright, so now we're going to be moving on to Gordo's moveset. This will be a bit on the comprehensive side, since I'll be going over every move, but nevertheless, I'll be giving a brief overview of each and some light frame data, and cover what their general uses are. In case you're new to Undernight or fighting games in general, I will be referring to these moves with number pad notation. This picture should explain it well enough if you're not sure about what that is. With this image in mind, holding back from where your character is facing is 4 and holding forward is 6. 5 is a neutral position, or no directional input. Pretty straightforward. Just remember that these notations account for facing to the right, so if you're facing left, it'll be mirrored. 6 would be holding left rather than right in this situation. Now, onto the moves. 5A. So 5A is your standard jab. It's a kick that hits low and is Gordo's fastest move both in terms of startup and recovery. Sadly, it falls short compared to other moves that occupy the same niche for other characters. In Undernight, the magic number is 5 frames in terms of what normals are the fastest. With this being the case, Gordo's 5A, which is 6 frames, will lose out to 5 frame jabs in terms of speed. In point blank neutral situations, try to go for a grab, which is 4 frames, instead of this. In terms of range, it's... it's short, it's, it's painfully short. Hides 2A for example, which is faster at 5 frames, outranges this move. Thus, it's kind of hard to mash this move despite it being your fastest, simply because an opponent can easily just clip you from outside of its range. It is, however, excellent during pressure, because it's only minus 1 in terms of frame disadvantage. It also gives you access to the smart steer string, which you can achieve by pressing the button again if it connects, both on hit or on block. The second hit of the string is 5B, can frame trap very easily in close distance as well, and if you condition well with this move, it sets you up really nicely for pressure resets or tick throws. You just need to watch out for the moves range. You really have to be up in your opponent's face. In addition, with it being Gordo's lightest move on recovery, it's the best option to reverse beat into from afar if you want to keep yourself safe. You can cancel 5A into itself by pressing 7, 8, or 9A, like with any other jab, but this isn't too useful because of its stubbiness. Gordo's 2A is a crouching jab that reaches a little bit further than 5A, but it hits mid and is one frame slower. This actually makes it slower than some B normals on other characters, which is pretty sad. <laughs> Nevertheless, you can easily cancel it into itself, and spacing out the timing to frame trap with it is very easy. It can actually recover fast enough in these situations to bait Veil off, much like other jabs. 
Still though, 2A is valuable during pressure. If you're being pushed out of 5A range, then you can just go for 2A. Alright, B normals. 5B is a punch with pitiful reach, takes quite some time to start up, and thus is near useless to throw out in neutral. So why is it that this is one of Gordo's best moves? It's simple really, it's for its application during your close range pressure. Not only does it move Gordo forward to keep you in effective range, it has a huge cancel window, and also leaves both you and your opponent at a neutral state advantage when it's blocked without shield. So what does this add up to? Essentially, this is a really easy move to use during pressure, and to test your opponent. If they don't respect you after you throw this move at them, they are extremely liable to getting hit with a frame trap, more so than 5A because of it leaving you at 0 frames of advantage, and how it closes the distance as well. It's just so incredibly easy to continue pressuring your opponent afterwards. Combine this with your 5A and the smart steer, and you have strings that can keep your opponent terrified and constantly guessing. All these aspects make 5B an extremely versatile move during pressure situations. You can frame trap them to start off, and then test to see if they do anything after you see them blocking it afterwards. If they start respecting it, that just opens the door for you to reset your pressure and go for a grab or mix up. It's also worth mentioning that using this move right after a dash will cause it to cover a lot of horizontal space. But be careful doing this if your opponent isn't locked down already. It can get blown up by backdashes or mash fairly easily. <laughs> Alright, so after that mouthful, we've come to Gordo's 2B. So 2B is a little bit more standard. It's a kick that hits low with decent startup and a fairly generous cancel window. The thing with this move though is that Gordo really sticks his boot out, and it reaches a lot further than Gordo's 5B. So it's ideal to throw out as a poke at close to mid-range. Nothing too crazy with this one, it's just really good and a lot safer than 5B. Not only does it come out faster, it reaches further, especially if you employ a micro dash beforehand as well. Alright, so 4B is a bit of a weird one to use. I have a buddy who derides this move because of how slow it is. And that's true. It's a, it's a fact. It's 1 frame slower than his 5B at 10 frame startup. So 2 frames slower than his 2B as well. And it doesn't even reach as far as 2B either. It's much worse as a poke than 2B in that sense. However, there's a bit of a caveat with this move. It actually moves you forward by quite a bit. Despite leaning his entire upper body backwards, Gordo somehow distorts space and reality with this move in such a way that he ends up moving forward on a whim. Now that, just hear me out here, okay? If you can play with this move's range so that it barely whiffs, you might be able to fish out retaliation and counter hit with a 2B right afterwards, as 4B just sets you up for that move's effective range. It also has a pretty funny, albeit inconsistent quality of it being able to crush certain lows. Honestly though, those aspects of 4B are more of a meme. <laughs> It's really iffy to use in neutral, but it's great to use for your block strings over anything else as your go-to frame trap move because of how punishing it is on a counter hit. It splats your opponent onto the ground for an easy confirm into a combo. So you're pretty much going to be using this move for your block strings mostly, but more so than anything else it looks cool. That, that's what matters, right? <laughs> now we come to the standing overhead 6B. 6B is an overhead maul. It hits high and has just about as much startup as most other standing overheads. I can draw parallels to Aurier or Eldum 6B, with how it moves Gordo forward a little bit, and how it can cancel in his special to get a combo. It's good to throw this move in every now and again, just be aware that it can easily be mashed. It's definitely more rewarding than a command grab in terms of damage though. Keep your opponent on your toes with your frame traps so that you can get this off safely. Whether they block it or not, you can go right into 2-2-A for example, to easily keep things going or get an easy confirm into some sweet damage. Alright, and now we're in the big leagues with Gordo's C normals. We're starting with his 5C, and just look at this thing, man. It hits mid at 16 frames of startup. It's a quick and versatile poke at long ranges. So you can do a few things with this move, whether it's cancelling it into a special, or reverse beating it to make yourself safe. Just be sure to remember that all of these options are fairly linear, and that your opponent will have a window of opportunity to close some distance afterwards. One thing you do have to keep in mind though, is that this move can easily be punished due to a strenuously long recovery period, and the fact that his hurt box extends forward by quite a bit. I would recommend just going for Mortal Slide, if you're not too confident with this move landing. Now up close, the versatility of this move holds true as well. Just linking this move immediately after some normals causes an innate frame trap. You also have to be careful with opponents in the Vorpal state, and with access to Chain Shift. 
If you autopilot this move in your attempted tight block strings, it will just get blown up by that. Also, for some reason it's air blockable, I have no idea why, but it is. Don't ask me. The sheer versatility of Gordo's 5C goes even further though, because you can charge it. Doing this will cause his 5C to hit overhead and incur ground bounce. It's pretty obvious, and if your opponent is worth their salt, you really won't be hitting this from long range, unless they shield low for some reason. Up close, this aspect really shines because you can still reverse beat it even if it's charged, unlike with 6B. So what does this mean in practice? This just means that you can do some pretty grimy and disgusting stuff with this move. You can actually do a charge 5C into a 6B for a double overhead. It's pretty disgusting, but you have to be pretty close for that. It also allows for a partially charged 5C into a low. It's great. You can pretend you're playing Melty Blood. Nevertheless, it's a little bit slower than 6B, so it's more liable to opponent reaction. So, again, be careful not to overdo it if you use this move. And now we have 2C. Oh, 2C. There's a little bit to cover with this one. It hits twice, the first hit being a low, and the second being an incredibly high-reaching mid. It also covers a deceptively large horizontal space as well. You can cancel the move at either of these points. This move just has it all, man. It's applicable for many different situations. It's fast, for Gordeaux at least. It hits low, it does good damage, it's an excellent anti-air, and it catches backdashes very easily. It actually has the same startup time as 2B, which is ridiculous for a normal like this. To talk a little bit more about its anti-air capability, the second hit just has incredible priority. And not only that, landing a counter hit on an airborne opponent with it will leave them suspended in hit stun until they hit the ground, allowing for an easy follow-up. I gravitate to this move both as a mash and as a meaty on my opponent's wake up simply because of its speed, size, and the amount of options it covers. Get used to this move being the crux of your combos as well. In addition, the move also opens the door for a lot of option selects for Gordo himself, which I will cover further when I discuss his game plan. Nothing more really needs to be said about this thing honestly, it's just an all-around, godlike move. 3C It's a sliding kick move, which, for Undernight, is actually kind of a rarity. The move hits low, can only be special cancelled on hit, and is a big part of Gordo's combos for the OTG and for the damage. This isn't really what makes the move so special though. What makes it special is a variable frame advantage. If you can space the move just right and get the opponent to block it at the tail end of its active frames, you will be at a frame advantage. You can also buff for Immortal Slide during the move so that if it hits, it'll confirm for you automatically. Much like Gord's 5C, 3C can be charged as well. All this does is increase the damage and increase the range he slides, but it's kind of awkward to use a neutral or for frame advantage purposes just because of the increased startup it requires. You'll mostly only be charging it for the sake of combos and the damage over anything else. Now we can move on to Gordo's jumping normals. I won't really be going into too much detail with these moves just because they're kinda dry to be honest, but nevertheless. JA is a stubby punch. It really doesn't look too useful at first glance, but it shines more when you use it in assaults. I'll go into more detail about this when I discuss Gordo's game plan. JB is a series of two kicks. It's mostly for combo filler, but it works well enough as an air-to-air -air attack. With it hitting twice, your opponents will be locked and hit stunned for quite some time, making air comboing with it a breeze. JC is your go-to jump in for both assaults and raw jumps, with it covering the most space downwards. You can charge it such that it will increase the damage and advantage you get from it being blocked. Just a few more normals to go. Like with every other character in the cast, Gordo has two dashing attacks, 6-6-B and 6-6-C. 6-6-B is very similar to 4-B, using the same animation and having a similar effect on counter hit, where the opponent falls on their ass and is ripe for a combo. The only thing you can do after it is cancel it into a special. Nevertheless, it's safe even on block, being only minus 2. And if you condition your opponent with this move specifically, you can try and use it to reset pressure if they guess incorrectly you'll be cancelling it immediately into a special. It's not really ideal though, because the dash startup time also means that the move will take a little bit more time to come out than anything else. The move, however, recovers much quicker than 4B on whiff, so if you're feeling tricky, you can just stick it out, much like 4B, to try and bait retaliation and close the gap. It's risky if they see it coming, of course, but I guess it's worth thinking about, you know? Now, 6-6-C on the other hand, 
In my opinion, being able to throw this move out means you're doing something right. Similar to 3C, this shoulder tackle can leave you at an advantage if you hit your opponent with the end of its active frames. That's not what makes this move so special. Unlike 3C, even on block, you can special cancel this move. So, nut milk, you're asking. This means literally nothing to me. What does this mean in practice? Essentially, the move leaves your opponent in enough block stun to open them up to a guessing game with your specials, especially in the corner. There's a bunch of things you can do, but the main advantage comes down to being able to cancel into 2-2-A to get huge plus frames, which makes the corner situation dire for your opponent. Alternatively, you can use Mortal Slide to frame trap them into a fat combo. Just throwing this out in neutral will often get you clipped, however. This is why I say that if you can land this move even on a blocking opponent, you're doing something right. The move and the subsequent follow-ups become even stronger in certain matchups, because the only way someone can retaliate to 2-2-A outside of reversals is if they have a 5-frame move. If your opponent doesn't have one, they'll be forced to block it or attempt to do a reversal out, which can easily be blocked by you in return if your 6 6 is in space at point blank. A good rule of thumb to go by if you see your opponent shielding your 6 6 c is to try for Mortal Slide. I haven't mentioned it yet, but successful shields in Undernight cause Blood Stun to decrease by 3 frames. A move that would have plus 6 advantage, for example, would then only have plus 3 advantage. Thus, your opponent might be more inclined to retaliate and mash against your shoulder bash. Make them regret that decision. Alright, and that just about covers it for Gordo's Normals. Join me later in part 2, where I discuss Gordo's special moves, some combos, as well as his game plan. Since you've made it this far, I just want to thank you personally for sticking around, whether you're a beginner to the game, or a more advanced player looking to brush up on their skills. Hell, even if you uh, hate the Gordo matchup and uh, just wanted to learn anti-Gordo tactics, that's fine too. I won't blame you. Uh, that aside, with the state of fighting games right now, what with uh, locals being out of commission for the time being, I just want to keep the spirit of this game alive in whatever way possible, and my only hope is that you took something from this guide. If you happen to be situated in East Coast Canada, or live in the Greater Toronto Area, hit me up for some games, I can hook you up, and once the world goes back to normal, <laughs> I'd be happy to bring you to some locals as well. Big shoutouts to Mui, a Louisiana-based player who taught me pretty much everything I know and am talking about here. I'll be seeing you all around, peace, until next time.